Wake up. You can't be late. Your hay fever has been debilitating. And over-the-counter antihistamines aren't gonna cut it. Parking is a nightmare, but you manage to make it just on time. Ahead of you is a long line of people, all coughing and sneezing. Strange. You double-check the appointment. 10 a.m., 12th of May, 2017. You're where you're supposed to be, but the door is locked. Beyond that locked door is a group of panicked healthcare workers, all staring at monitors, praying their problem will just disappear. The receptionist pops her head out, apologizing for the delay. Their systems are down, but they're sure to be back online in no time. Your phone buzzes. It's a news headline, immediately contradicting her words. Ransomware strikes the NHS. But it wasn't just the NHS. 300,000 computers across 150 countries all had their files forcefully encrypted, followed by this notification. You had three days to pay the $300 ransom, or else the price would be raised. And if that wasn't enough to compel you, after seven days the decryption keys would be deleted, meaning the files would be lost forever. WannaCry was the ransomware's name, and was developed by a North Korean hacker group by the name of Lazarus. Typically ransomware infects a computer when a malicious link is clicked, but this was different. Instead, it exploited a flaw in an old version of Windows, so if your system was outdated, you were at high risk of being affected. Of course, a lot of NHS systems were outdated, and so they took the most notable hit. 20,000 appointments were cancelled, only emergencies were seen to. The pressure was on. Hackers were working around the clock to crack the code, hoping to be the hero that took down WannaCry. But as the days passed, the only thing to change were the timers, ominously ticking down. Do we pay off the criminals? Or do we accept the countless medical documents are just gone? Monday the 15th of May. You wake up to an email, rescheduling your appointment. The ransomware seemingly just vanished, but there's still no decryption key. WannaCry is just gone. Behind the scenes, there was a blogger, going by the name of MalwareTech, who posted cybersecurity research for fun, but his latest blog was of particular interest. Like countless other hacker men, he was experimenting with the WannaCry ransomware. When sifting through the code, he found a bizarre looking web address. It was unregistered. Why is there a non-existent website in the middle of ransomware code? Out of curiosity, Malwaretech paid $10 to register the domain. The moment he did, 300,000 infected computers were cured, saving the affected systems a collective $90 million. It was a kill switch, an arbitrary web domain that when registered, the malware would cease to operate. It was their big red abort button in case things went wrong. Malwaretech found it, and he pressed it. He was hailed as a hero by the media. Please, Malware Tech, share your identity so we can sing your praises and milk you for sensational headlines. Uh, I'm good, thanks. The limelight makes me nervous. I don't really want the attention. Go f yourself, says the media. Breaking news. NHS hero has been identified as Marcus Hutchins, age 22, living in Devon, England. In no time, reporters were at his doorstep, desperate for a crumb of information. Living with his parents at the time, his mother refused interviews on his behalf. Besides, he didn't have time to entertain the noise. His work wasn't done. See, if that domain's registration was to falter, the ransomware could reactivate. It was less of a kill switch and more of a sleeper switch. Constantly renewing the domain wasn't a final solution. So Marcus took on the role of educating and advising people on the importance of updating their systems. The attention wasn't slowing down. It was time to get away. Marcus flew to the States to attend DEF CON, an annual hacker conference held in Las Vegas. His feat of stopping the world's largest cybersecurity hack earned him high respect amongst the community. He left the pit of parasitic journalists camping outside his front door for a week-long event where he was seen as a god. 
Adoring hackers buying his drinks. Opportunistic journalists buying his meals. His friends pooled their money together and rented a 30-room mansion to rest at between VIP events. On the final day of DEF CON, Marcus was rolling up a hangover cure while waiting for his Uber Eats to arrive. As he went to collect it, he noticed a black SUV across the road. Was it paranoia? Was he being watched? The thought left his mind as soon as it entered. After all, he had a Big Mac to eat, dragons to chase, and a flight to catch. Sleep deprived, with a stomach that could heave at any moment, Marcus waited anxiously at the gate of his first class flight back home. But before he could board his flight, he felt a cold hand grip his shoulder and was led to a dingy back room, where two FBI agents questioned him long enough to miss his flight. An hour into the interrogation, Marcus was presented a warrant for his arrest. When he was 14, Marcus joined a peaceful hacker form where people could develop and showcase their skills. His first contribution was a program that stole passwords, which was met with high praise. When his school systems were compromised, authorities pointed to Marcus, permanently suspending him from using school computers. He began skipping school, spending more time in the malware forms. His presence online grew, and his reputation preceded him. Eventually, he was approached by someone he knew only as Vinny. Vinny wanted a custom rootkit, a computer program designed to provide privileged access to a computer while actively hiding its presence. He proposed that Marcus program it and he'll manage the distribution for a 50-50 split, an opportunity to get paid serious money for his passion at only 16 years of age was an easy decision. A cooperative relationship was formed. At one point, Marcus complained to Vinny about the lack of good weed available to him, so Vinny wished him a happy 17th birthday with a parcel of recreational drugs. Earning thousands of dollars through Bitcoin, Marcus was able to drop out of school and live comfortably, keeping his source of income nice and vague for anyone asking. Time passed, and Vinny reached out again, requesting an updated version of the rootkit looking for new sophisticated hacking features, such as keylogging and web injecting. Marcus figured this was to target financial transactions online. Uncomfortable being complicit in cybercrime that severe, Marcus refused. So Vinny got on his hands and knees and pleaded. Nah, not really. Vinny was a scumbag. He reminded Marcus that he knew his name and address, and had proof of him receiving drugs in the mail. Compliance wasn't really optional, so Marcus added the key logging. Soon after, Vinny found another programmer to further develop the rootkit, again asking Marcus to cooperate. With one foot in the grave, Marcus decided he might as well get paid for the work he's already completed. The rootkit was renamed Kronos, after the Greek Titan, and was sold for $7,000 per unit. While racking up thousands in passive income, Marcus met his associate Randy through hacking forums. Randy was looking for a banking rootkit like Kronos. Marcus didn't reveal his ties, but since Randy's goals were philanthropic, he helped him as much as he could, without incriminating himself. One night his power fails, causing Hutchins to lose $5,000 of Randy's Bitcoin. To make up for it, Marcus revealed his connection to Kronos and offered Randy a free copy. He made up for his error, but soon realized the much greater mistake he had made. He revealed who he was to a stranger, and so fear of law enforcement set in. Marcus distanced himself from Kronos, and Vinny distanced the profits from Marcus. He moved on, deciding to use his whole experience for good, taking what he learned evaluating other rootkits and his own work on Kronos. Marcus decided to start a blog on deep analysis of hacks anonymously under the malware tech alias. As new rootkits appeared, Hutchins began reverse engineering those and writing the details on malware tech. He wrote his own tracking service that could join a botnet and monitor its operations and intentions, gaining hugely valuable insight to hacker movements. His writings even drew the interest of Salim Nino, 
the CEO of Crypto's Logic, who offered him a job. Marcus accepted, and for the second time, he had turned his passion into profit. Held in jail, Marcus had one free phone call, and he used it to call Nino. Nino, in turn, spread the word across the cybersecurity community. Unaware of his questionable past, the community rallied to his aid. They crowdfunded the $30,000 bail money, but since a bulk of those contributions came from stolen credit cards, they were, of course, inadmissible. Ultimately, Tara Wheeler, a friend of Hutchins and a fellow security specialist, initiated a secure crowdfunding to successfully bail him out. He was released on bail, but still had to face his charges, and the evidence was stacked against him. The FBI even had copies of his conversation with Randy, as proof of his connection to Kronos. Yet, Hutchins pleaded not guilty in the hopes of entering a plea deal. Negotiations began in 2018, and Marcus was offered a reduced sentence in return for information. He would essentially be a free man, so long as he gave up dirt on Vinny as well as several other hackers. Unable to provide anything significant on Vinny, and unwilling to reveal information on other hackers, four charges were added to his indictment, given his failure to comply. A year later, in April of 2019, a plea deal was finalized. Hutchins would plead guilty to two of the 10 charges. One, conspiring to commit wire fraud, and two, distributing, selling, promoting, and advertising a device used to intercept electronic communications. Both charges carry up to five years imprisonment and a $250,000 fine. In return, prosecutors agreed to drop all other charges. This is typical of the American judicial system, which prizes efficiency over fairness. Reportedly 98% of criminal cases in the federal courts result in a plea bargain, so two years after he saved his own country's healthcare system, it was time to be sentenced. Sentenced as an adult for a crime he committed when he was a minor, in a country thousands of miles from where he committed it. There was little chance he was coming away from that courtroom without a few years behind bars. His defense? I've since been using the same skills that I misused several years ago for constructive purposes. On the 26th of July, 2019, the judge recognized that Hutchins had turned the corner from using his skills for criminal purposes into beneficial uses well before he had faced justice. On this basis, Hutchins was sentenced to time served and one year of supervised release. Let's recap. Our friend Marcus saves one of the most vocational industries from a malicious attack. The media then ignores his wish to remain anonymous. Then when he tries to escape the limelight, he's intercepted by the US government. They attempt to leverage him for information on other hackers by threatening 30 odd years in prison. When that failed, they said, okay, if you acknowledge you're in the wrong, we'll let you go. But if anyone asks, it's because we recognize the net positive in your work and you should be grateful for that. He was used as an example. They subjected him to years of unnecessary stress, seemingly to set a precedent and send a message to up and coming hackers. If you're willing to break the law for a few thousand dollars, you might want to save your government a few million, just to balance it out. So where's Marcus now? Well, right this instant, there's a good chance he's on a luxurious first class flight or speaking in a conference to a sea of people, despite his fear of public speaking. He's managed to leverage this whole experience to further hoist his reputation online, boasting over half a million followers across social media platforms. Marcus can pretty much do what he likes and the money is sure to follow. Doing what he does best, turning his passion into profit.